but I got it up. How are you all doing tonight? Today, I am Coach Ruth and welcome to 15 to Life, where we learn, grow, and serve for a peaceful life. I'm so happy that you are on here for my second um, live that I'm doing, uh, not just on Sundays, but I'm going live every day. And uh, so yesterday I talked about um, what was 15 to life, what it is and all that. And so I, uh, I thought that I was only going to be on there for a little bit, but I was on there much longer than what I, uh, thought I was going to be. So let me say in the beginning, um, if you are on here, welcome, make sure that you subscribe to the page, hit that subscription button. Also hit the notification button so that whenever I'm on, you will be notified and hit that thumbs up, hit that like button because that helps as well. So make sure that you do that. Okay. So again, so I'm so happy for everybody who is on here, those who will be watching later. I know this is a Friday afternoon and people are working and people are out doing stuff and I get it. And so I know so many of you will be watching uh, later on. And so welcome whenever you are watching this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so, like I said, so yesterday I talked a lot about um, what 15 the life was. And so I talked about how, you know, we learn, grow and serve. But what I really want to talk about today is learning, which is another aspect of when we say we learn, grow and serve. So I really want to talk about learning today. Y'all see, I got my, what y'all think about my scarf? I went to the Y this morning at, uh, let me see, I took a six o'clock class while we're at 6 a.m. class. I think it's like a pile, maybe. It's a mix between uh, Pilates and yoga. So it's really just a lot of stretching. And I tell you what, uh, Matt went with me and it was really hard, especially on my lower back. We're talking about learning. So I had to learn about how to do these stretches and do them properly. And I told the instructor, because he was like, well, what do you think about the class? And I said, you know, my lower back is so tight. And he said, well, that's because he said, when you're running, you know, you're just pounding your back. You're pounding, 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 all your spine just hitting. And so it's like, it's compressing all that. And so when you're stretching, it's just like, oh, pulling all that. So anyway, so my hair was a mess. And so I was like, I didn't have time to wash it. So this is what y'all got today. Okay, this is what y'all got. So anyway, so what I want to talk about today is just for a little bit is the learning aspect of 15 to life. So yes, we say this is 15 to life where we learn, grow, and serve for a peaceful life. Hello there, Phyllis. Hello, Auntie Helen. Um, and, and again, whoever else is going to be on here, welcome. I'm just so happy that y'all are on here, okay? And, okay, so why learn? Why should we learn? Why? There's a scripture that says, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. That's Proverbs 1 and 5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. So if you're wise, you want to add to your learning. You're never going to feel like that. Like I said yesterday, that I know it all, that I got it all. <laughs> hey, I see that. Um, so if you're wise, you want to learn more. You want to do more. Oh my gosh, I forgot my question. I just got straight in because my thing was off. Y'all know I told you yesterday that I was going to start every episode with a movie trivia. Now, I don't know if you guys who are on here right now would know the answer to this, but I'm going to put it out there anyway because somebody might put the answer in later on. OK, so the question is. In the movie. Uh, 
the best man. Lance Sullivan was played by what actor? And then what was his job? What did he do? Okay. In the movie, The Best Man, Lance Sullivan was played by what actor? And then what did he do? That's what I want to know. Okay. So y'all might be like, if you don't know, be like, what the heck? I don't know. Okay. So let me move on. All right. So why learn? Because the scripture says that the wise listen and add to their learning. So you want to add to your learning if you're wise. You don't want to say, I know it all. I got it all. I don't need any help. Uh, my son, Matt, is really good. Every time we tell him something or if I give some advice or whatever, he's always going, I know. I know. I know. And it's like, you don't know. But he's like, I know. I know. But we always want to learn, right? And let the discerning get guidance. So we always want to get guidance. Uh, my husband, even though he is a very learned man, always reads, always studying, always trying to be better, but he still gets guidance from his bishop and listens to him and uh, takes advice from him and sits at his feet. So he's never like, oh, I know it all. He's, a, he's very much wanting to always learn and grow and all that kind of stuff. Y'all know I've told y'all how he used to talk me to sleep because he'd be talking so much and he still does it. He did it in the very beginning and he still talks me to sleep, right? Okay, because he's always learning and wanting to know more. Okay, so that's why we should learn. Why learn? And then here's a question I want to throw out there. So what if you stopped learning after the age of one? And what are some things that you would never know? Hello there, Pastor Harris, how are you? So what if you stopped learning at the age of one? And what are some things that you would never know? And you just put those, I'm gonna give you, I know they're like a couple seconds behind, but type something in, a comment in. Remember I told you yesterday, I want your comments. I need your participation because this is not just me. So if you just stopped growing or learning, you stopped learning at the age of one, what are some uh, good? I'm glad you're doing well. If you stopped learning at the age of one, what are some things that you would never know? And I would venture to say some of the things that you would never know after the age of one, maybe you would never know uh, how to use the restroom on your own, right? You maybe always would be in a diaper. Uh, maybe you wouldn't know how to feed yourself properly. Um, maybe you might even not know how to walk. OK, because not everybody, every child walks at one. Uh, now, I know from what my mama told me, I was walking at the age of nine months. Yeah. Yeah, because that's just me. Right. <laughs> but not everybody walks before one. OK, uh, some people walk, you know, some children walk after the age of one. So what are some things? OK, uh, let me think. You would never know how to read. You wouldn't know how to write. Uh, you wouldn't know your numbers. You wouldn't know colors. There's a million things that you wouldn't know if you stopped learning at the age of one. And it's still the same. Even a person who's 10, who's 30, who's 50, who's 70, who's 80, okay, who's 90. There's still some things that if you stopped learning that you wouldn't know past that age. So you're always, it's ever, ever learning. It's ever learning, okay? It's always ever learning. So you never that you never want to stop, no matter what your age. I don't care if you're 95 years old. There's still something that you can learn. Okay. 
And so here's the next thing. So why learn? Why learn? It prepares you for the next level. You're not going to go to that next level if you don't learn. If you don't learn how to walk, how are you going to get up the stairs? You might be able to crawl a little bit, but you're not really going to get there. It prepares you for your next level. It's just like in school, right? When you're in kindergarten, they're teaching you what? Your colors and, you know, uh, your numbers and things like that. They're preparing you in kindergarten for first grade. First grade prepares you for second grade. Second grade prepares you for third grade and on and on and on. High school prepares you for college and university. That prepares you for graduate school. That prepares you to go on and get your doctorate. Every level prepares you for the next one. So if you want to go to that next level, see, we all say, everybody goes. Especially in church. I'm going to another level, right? We all want to go to that next level. But we don't want to do the work. We don't want to learn because there's stuff that we got to know to get to that next level, right? And I have this uh, pillow, and I'm not sure how it's showing with you, but it says, how are you going to have wings and don't fly? How are you going to have wings? You got wings. You can fly. You can get there. But you ain't flying. You on the ground with the chickens and pecking and eating the rocks and the corn when you're supposed to be soaring. But you got to learn, right? Because it gets, when you learn, it prepares you for the next level. Are you going to, do you really want to go to the next level? All right. If you really want to, only you can answer that. Then you have to be able to do the work and learn what you need to learn to get there. When I was starting my business, I had no freaking idea what to do or how to start a business. I never owned a business before. It was, you know, it was just like, hmm, okay, let me see what I can do with this. But you know what I did? I went to the people who knew what to, um, how to uh, get me the information so I could start my business. So I went to the uh, Southern Indiana Small Business Association and talk to the people there. And thankfully, all that information was free. You just meet with them and they tell you everything. But I had a lot to learn. But what if I said, well, I don't know nothing about birth of no babies. You know, like the lady in, uh, what was that movie? Gone with the Wind, right? Be willing to learn and be able to live life to the fullest. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, but I had no idea how to start a business, but I had to learn. I didn't say, well, I don't know. So I guess I can't do it. You know, no, I learned, I researched and I listened when the people said, you need to do this, you need to do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. I listened. And that's why I have my business because I learned how, and I'm still learning. There's still a lot that I don't know. Okay, so learning, it prepares you for the next level. I would never have my business if I hadn't learned what to do. Never. Even being on here with you guys. When my husband's first showed me, I, I always say, I wish y'all could see the screens and stuff and everything that's going on. When he first was showing me that, I was like, oh, no, I can't do that. It's too much stuff. But he's showing me all this stuff and buttons and this and that. I was like, oh, no. But if I wanted to do this, I had to learn. I had to learn what buttons to hit. What but That's why when I first came on and the camera wasn't on, in the beginning, I would have freaked out. I would have just been like, oh, let me just shut this down. But now I was just like, oh, okay. I think I know what to do. So that's why I went in there and clicked the right buttons and got the camera on. Because I knew, okay? 
So y'all give me some comments. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Okay, so why learn? It prepares you for the next level. It also, it pushes you past your critics. And what I thought about with this is I thought about the movie, The Wiz. Here I go with my movies, right? Because in the movie, The Wiz, you had the scarecrow. And he's, his name, Scarecrow. He's supposed to scare the crows. But guess what they're doing? His critics that he's supposed to be scary. They're scaring him. So when he thinks, you know, oh, you know, guys, can I get down from this here pole? And they like, oh, no, see, you getting too big for your britches. I think you need to sing. What is it? Do the crow commandments. So he had to say, I'm going to honor all crows, right? So he going through this whole list. He's supposed to be scaring them, but they ruling him. I'm going to honor all these crows. Oh, and then now I think you need to sing the song. Oh, I got to sing that song again. Oh, yeah. So then he's singing. We can't win. You can't win. You can't get over and mm -hmm, I don't know all the words. Right? So he's singing. He's supposed his name. This why you gotta know your name and be know who you are. He didn't know who he was. He was the scare crow. Scaring crows, but they were scaring him because he didn't know who he was. They had tricked him so much, he didn't know who he was. So that's the same way with you guys and some of your critics, you done fell in that they, they, they talking to you and telling you can't do it. And why, who do you think you are? And, you know, in this family, we don't do that. And we don't do this. And you think you better than everybody in the family. And so you just say, okay, I ain't going to do it. I'm just going to, I guess, you know, I'm just going to fall in line with everybody else. Don't do it. When you learn and grow, why do you think that the slave owners, why do you think that they, when those enslaved came over here, the first thing they did was took their language, they took their names, who they were, so they didn't know who they were. And then the ones who were born on this land, they had no idea because they separated them from their mothers, their fathers, their siblings. They had no idea who they were. But once the slaves begin learning who they were, then that's when things begin to change. Okay. I found this quote by Marcus Garvey, who was uh, like a black historian, really uh, for black people. And he says the people without the knowledge of their Past history, I'll read that again. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Wow. How are you going to have a tree without any roots? You can't. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't exist. Right? So you got to learn who you are because it pushes you past the negativity and even going back to the whiz, when you think, oh, thank you. <laughs> even when you go back to all of the, the characters, you know, in the whiz or the Wizard of Oz, all of them were learning who they were to push themselves past the criticism, right? So when you learn whether, whether that was, okay, let me see, in the the Wiz, you had the Scarecrow who, I mean, not the Scarecrow, the um, the Tin Man who was sitting, uh, uh, teeny, teeny, teeny was on him. And they had to get the teeny off of him and all that. And then you had the lion who was uh, encased in this statue, which is another whole thing that he wasn't realizing who he was because he was afraid you know, to face who he actually was. Like he was afraid and that's okay, okay? But he was afraid of what people would say. He was afraid of his critics. So he was hiding, right? So when you learn, it pushes you past your critics. 
And then sometimes you just need that person that's going to help you. Going back to the scarecrow in the whiz. It took, uh, what's her name? Mm -hmm. Dorothy. I was going to say Diana Ross. It took Dorothy to come and get him down be, and help him realize who he was. And sometimes we need help. We need to, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. We need help. We need somebody to help us recognize who we are. Okay. All right. The next one. So learning, it takes you to the next level. It pushes you past your critics and it changes your perspective. What do you see here? I know this part of it's not on there. Do you see an old woman? I mean, this is like an old thing. So I'm sure everybody has seen this. Do you see an old woman or do you see a young woman? What do you see? It's all in your perspective, right? Going back to a movie again, I think about The Color Purple, not the new one. Even though it was okay, my references will always still be to the old, to the original Color Purple. All my references. Okay, so when Celie got all those letters that her sister Nettie had written her, Remember when Shug found all the letters and stuff and, and yeah, she was like, oh, so many of us don't know what I'm going to do. And she starts reading those letters. And once she finds out, oh my God, that my sister is still alive. She's with my children. They're over in Africa. They're learning all this stuff. And this is what's going on with them. Blah, blah. What did she do? She was like, mm. so that's when, remember when she saw that uh, clothing thing? Oh, yeah, you see a young woman. Yeah, yeah. See if you can see an old lady. And so uh, when she saw like his um, thing that he would put his suits on, the mannequin thing. And uh, first, when she first saw her, she was like, uh, you know, because she thought it was him. And it was like, Pfft. and she pushed down past it. Yeah. And then also remember when she was reading her letters and he wanted her to give him a shave and then he hit her. And then she was like, mm, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to cut you. Right? Because her, her, whole, her whole perspective had changed. She was like, no, you messing with the wrong one now. And she was going to cut him. And so she came and grabbed her hand. Right? So when you learn things, it changes your perspective and how you see things. Once you begin to learn who you are, it changes your perspective. If you guys have any comments on that, you let me know. Make sure if you are on here that if you have not already that you subscribe, please subscribe. And then also hit the notification button. It's a little bell so that whenever I am on, you will be notified. And then also uh, give me a thumbs up. I'm going to go out here and see how many if I can see how many likes I have, I need you guys to go out there and hit that thumbs up and give me some likes because then that helps with my analytics and all of that. So give me a thumbs up. I need y'all to do that for me. If you have not done that, I need you to do that. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, so you said you see a young woman. Anybody else? What do you see? So when you learn, it changes your perspective and how you see things, how you grow. I tell you, when um, I was working as a chaplain and was learning all of that, you talk about a change in perspective. Oh yeah. I have a newfound respect for that whole system, for the chaplains, especially, you know, people losing loved ones and it just change how you see things. And uh, so as you learn, as you learn. Okay, so what's the next thing? Why learn? L learn something that is not in your niche. Something that you don't normally are around. Like, uh, I probably won't do this with myself, but <laughs> uh, like, I don't particularly care for Major League Baseball. It's too slow to me. Okay, so maybe learn, I could learn to love, like Major League Baseball. 
Okay. Learn something that's not in your niche that you wouldn't normally learn about or know about. Okay. Or that people in your circle know about. Get outside of the box and learn something different. Like me, like I said this morning, when I took that Pio class, the Pilates and yoga class, I had never taken a class like that before. Matt and I took it. And um, yeah, it was six o'clock this morning. We took that class and it was hard. And it was just, like I said, it was all stretching and posing and whoo. And it really pushed me. So I have a different perspective now. Because I stretched out outside of the box. Normally, I would just take a spin class or a body pump class. But this was totally different. And it was good because I stretched myself. Okay? So see something, learn something that's not in your niche, not in your sphere uh, that's outside of the box. Learn that. Okay? Did y'all give me some thumbs up? I need y'all to give me some thumbs up. Let me see. Hmm. I'm trying to see here. I need y'all to give me some thumbs up. Okay. And read. I know. What a novel idea. <laughs> read. I have on here the habits of uh, highly effective people. That's a, that's a book that you could read. But one of the ones that I'm reading right now, and again, I don't know if you can, I'm not necessarily trying to promote this person. I'm not getting any money or whatever. But this book is called How to Meet Yourself, the workbook for self-discovery. Uh, it's like a workbook and it's really good. I'm kind of getting into it. So, you know, I'm doing this book. And uh, read, I think I read somewhere the other day that said, you know, I think like one out of, it was a really high number of Americans don't even have any, didn't read a book last year. Okay. And so we need to read more. That's how you learn. You read. And I think I read somewhere once that if you read like so many books per year, uh, then after five on the same subject and after five years, you've read so many books per year. After five years, you become an expert in that subject because you've been reading about it for five years. You become an expert on that. Wow. What can you become an expert on if you just read a book and read the same type of book for five years on the same subject? You become an expert. The, the information will just ooze out of you. You're just, you know, like talking to people and all that stuff just oozes out because that's what's in you, right? So that could be good or bad. Somebody is calling me and it was a telemarketer. I should have uh, turned the ringer off on my phone. Sorry about that. So... That's something that I have to learn. Next time, Ruth Ward, turn your ringer off on your phone, right? Maybe I can crochet like, hey, you can learn that. Absolutely. And make me a blanket. I'd love a blanket because I think it's just uh, a bunch of granny squares put together. Just do a bunch of granny squares. Listen to me, just a bunch of granny squares. I think that's what it is. But you can make one for your great-grandchildren a blanket they'll always have that and they'll be like oh my god my Gigi made that for me right oh she said more now you got the answer uh okay so you see where phyllis put in morris chestnut okay right but you got to say the rest of the answer oh because remember i told you guys at the beginning of every episode i was going to give you a movie trivia question so the trivia question was in the movie, The Best Man, Lance Sullivan was played by what actor? And then what did he do for a living? So Lance Sullivan was played by Morris Chestnut. But what did he do? Okay. Okay. She, Sandra, I just joined the Y to better myself. So Monday morning, I'm on. I want to, uh, want to, and improve my health. 
Yeah. Oh, feel better. It's probably feel better and improve my health. Absolutely. I'm giving you claps and I mean that. I'm giving you thumbs up, two thumbs up. Absolutely. I love it. And I, and I know I've said this before, Pastor Harris, but I love your enthusiasm for life. I do. And I, let me see, I, I don't know. What are you, 80 maybe? I don't know. Put it, if you feel like putting that in there, your age. I appreciate and I am so in awe of your love for life and you're all wanting to do stuff. And even like last year, when you went on the treat, retreat and you were like, I'm going hiking with you guys. And when I said for this retreat uh, going on in April and you were like, and I said, we might go uh, zip lining. You're like, I want to go zip lining. And I'm like, yes, I want nothing more to get some video of you zip lining. Oh my God, you will put so many women to shame. I love it. I love it. I honestly, and I mean that from the with my whole heart, that I love your zest for life. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I said retreat, let me show you really, really quick. Uh, I am having a women's retreat in April. It's April 11th, Thursday, April 11th through Saturday, April 13th. And it is entitled Family, the Good, the Bad, and the Blessed. And it is at um, Cumberland Falls State uh, Resort Park in Corbin, Kentucky. And if you want more information on that, I'd love to have you there. You can go to I am Ruth Ward, which is my website, I am RuthWard.com. And if you scroll down, you will see there is a video that I take there. And if you click on the learn more and register today, uh, you could register for that retreat. And I would, like I said, I would love to, to, to see you there. And, uh, and if you're there with us, then you will get to see Pastor Harris zip lining with us. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, I know. No, she does not. She's going to be 81. You're going to be 81. Oh my God. See, I was right. You're 80. Okay. Uh, 81. And if you, what a blessing, what an absolute blessing, what an absolute blessing. I love it. You put all us young people to shame, right? <laughs> you do. You put us to shame. You put us to shame. With all that you do, and like I said, your zest for life. I just love it, love it, love it. Well, listen, ladies, I am done for the day. All right? And I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you learned something. I know I did. I learned that I need to turn the ringer off on my phone so that just in case a telemarketer calls. And I learned to make sure that my camera was on. Because in the beginning, it wasn't. And then I had to turn it on. So I learned some stuff today. Learned what took that pile class, right? Ugh. Stretching. Love you guys. I'm going to say it. Here's my ending. I love you. I believe in you. I believe in your dreams. But most importantly, I believe in your action. So you got to get out there. You got to do it. You got to learn. You got to get you a book. You got to do all the things so that you can learn, so that you can grow and be better. You can't grow. See, it's all levels. You got to learn first. You're never going to grow until you learn, right? So we got to learn. Love you all. Uh, tomorrow, when I come on, it may not be, it probably won't be at 12. It's going to be earlier because I'm going to go on live right after I finish my run. So like I said yesterday, I'm going to be looking pretty rough because we got to do five miles tomorrow. So I'll probably have all, all my, you know, all my stuff from running. And I'll probably still be, we got to be at Seneca Park tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. So I will be there to run my five miles. It's going to be heels. So it's going to be a little rough. But so y'all say a prayer for me on that. And, uh, and then I will see you on Sunday as well. So you guys have a great rest of your day. 
learn something. All right. Learn something. Learn something. I cannot believe you're going to be 81. That is wonderful. Yes. I hope that I am doing that. I hope that I am doing that. I love it. I love it. So I am going to get out of here and uh, do the rest of my day. And I've got some things going on. Like I said, tomorrow, I'll see you right after my run. And then I'll see you Sunday night, and then Monday and on and on and on and on. All right. I love you. I believe in you. I believe in your dreams. But most importantly, I believe in your action. You all have a wonderful, peaceful day. Bye-bye. Finally finding me. Third eye opening up so I can see. Had some rough nights lately, but I'm feeling light. Sun on my face, wind in my hair, color so bright. Trying to smile instead of quick to battle on sight. Loving it now, choosing what's really worth the fight. Lust for the clouds, mountains and the rain. Understanding through my dreams that there's a path to heal pain. Getting lit to stay lit, it just don't hit the same. Got so sick and tired of playing the game, yeah. Stay in the